Welcome back to Covered in Pet Hair. I'm your host, Isabel alvarez Arada, and today I have the pleasure of having a drink and a chat with a pet parent, a groomer, a photographer. She's an entrepreneur and a former vet tech. She's a foodie, a wine snob, and a cocktail connoisseur. She is a self-proclaimed Disney freak that even went as far as to get married at Disney and have the carriage ride and everything. She was born and raised in Charleston, South Carolina. She's wife to husband Tom, mom to an eight-year-old son named T, which is short for Thomas. She's cat ma to an eight-year-old black cat that used to be feral, but now is a social butterfly. His name is Nemo. She's mama to a sphinx cat named Rapunzel, ironically enough. And she is the cat ma to a star on IG named Monty, who also happens to be a cat. She is Charleston's only certified feline master groomer, Whitney Bullock. Thank you, Whitney, for being on the show. Thank you. Thank you for having me. I'm so happy you're here. But before we get into all that, uh, let me introduce our drinking game today. So audience, anytime you hear this word, make sure you take a drink of whatever it is you're enjoying. Make sure you're over 21 in the US to partake, never drink and drive, and always drink responsibly. So what are you having tonight, Whitney? I am drinking an Americano, which is a Campari beverage. I love Campari. I know it's not for everybody, but I really like it. Oh my gosh, Americano. I haven't had an Americano since I was in Venice. Not to sound like a snob, but everybody was ordering them there. I was like 24 and I'd never had one before. It's a strong flavor for somebody who's not like experienced, but Mm -hmm. it's a very good drink. Well, I like when you try to order Americano some places and they bring you a coffee. (laughs) Yes, no, the Americano drink. I need the alcoholic <laughs> version of it. Right. Yes. The not the watered down coffee. No. I want the Campari no. drink. Yes. Yes. I am actually having a an orange crush because I imagined us having spent the day at the beach in Charleston and meeting up for a drink somewhere, something refreshing. So I'm having a an orange crush just in celebration nice. of what spring, summer, and maybe a yes. trip to the beach. I don't know. Cheers. Yes. Thank you for Cheers. being on the show. Cheers. Thank you. All right, so I always introduce this show with a game. And today we're playing three games because you're extra special and I'm extra excited. Okay. But the first game we're playing, it's called Percentage. And I'm going to give you a statement and you're going to just, based on your experience, your training, you're going to give me a percentage uh, that corresponds as an answer to these questions. Are you ready to play? Yes. All right, here we go. The first one is, what percentage of pet cats go to the groomer? Oh, gosh, it's hard to say. I would probably say maybe 50%. Not enough? <laughs> is that right? No, no. Not, not enough, probably. I th- no. 50% is actually more than I expected, so that's pretty... Promising. I mean, don't quote me on that, but I'm just No, guessing. I know. This is totally based on your experience and your training. And I'm sure okay. that there are percentages for based on different areas and different yeah, breeds sure. and all of that stuff. So, all right. Next one. What percentage of cats need brushing daily? Oh, probably 75%. Ooh, does that breed matters or just like the activity long level hair or oh long haired especially older cats especially um cats that like to go outside and get wet and come back inside and not be dry all that can cause like matting so yeah all right perfect what percentage of cats enjoy visiting the groomer uh probably 70 percent 70 percent pretty good actually i yeah, expected it less is. Yeah. Okay. What percentage of cats have matted or crusty hair when they come to see you? Oh, the first, <laughs> the first time, probably like 70%. Yikes. Yeah, I can imagine that. Um, yeah. This actually, my set next question is what percentage of your daily cat clients are first timers? Uh, probably 50%. Wow, that is so it's good. That's promising because that means people are learning more about cat grooming and getting them to the groomers more now than ever. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. That is good news. Okay, two more. What percentage of pet parents understand that regular professional grooming is necessary for their cat's health and wellness? I think that's a 50 50. Like a lot of people, it's a very, very divided. Let me tell you, I don't know if you read the comments. 
on our Instagram page, but whew, we're going to really talk intense. about that. We are actually <laughs> going to talk about that uh, in the second part of the show. Uh, okay, but the last yeah. question I have for you is what percentage of pet parents are shocked by the price of cat grooming? Uh, probably only about 20%. 20% because yeah cat grooming is more expensive than dog grooming is that right oh yeah and why is that other than the uh, fact that there aren't as many cat groomers out there there's well yeah there's not as many uh so somebody just commented on my so I actually just did a blog, a blog post about this um my assistant Shannon and I did and uh somebody commented that cats are made of liquid they are so cats skin is actually not attached to their muscles and everything. They have a subcutaneous layer. So when you go to shave them, their skin moves and can fold in all these different ways. And you can cut them very, very easily. They won't just stand there like a dog does. Like it's a very physical job. You have a cat like right next to your face that you've just met that might like turn around and bite you. Um, it's a hazard. And if you get bit or scratched by a cat, you pretty much got to go to the doctor and get some antibiotics. Yes, exactly. So the risk is higher than with dogs because cats, like pretty much any bite, any scratch will likely get infected, right? Yeah. And you have to be a pretty brave person to take a cat that you've never met and take it to a bathtub and bathe it. And, it's, <laughs> you know, I do it all. It's not hard for me, but for somebody to just do that, it can be terrifying. Oh my gosh, I can't even imagine. Okay, so you were a vet tech before becoming a groomer. How did that yes. transition come to be? Uh, so I worked at a vet that only saw cats. So I've only ever worked with cats. So very, very few dogs I've ever worked with. So 15 years of only working with cats. Um, and we did some grooming there. That was before grooming was really popular. So it was mostly just shaves for matted cats. And I just loved it. Like I saw a need for it. I fell in love with it. It's a much happier job than being a vet tech because a vet tech, you got to deal with some pretty sad things. Yes. The veterinary field in general is not the best way to spend your time with animals because they're usually yeah, sick or it can take a toll. Absolutely. Uh, hats off to the vets and vet techs because you absolutely. do the hard work for sure. Yes, for sure. All right. So you are a certified feline master groomer. So what yes. does that mean? And how does one become that. So I studied with the National Cat Groomers Institute, and it's actually uh, was started here in South Carolina in the upstate. And it's a pretty intense process. Uh, you go through like an online course with like a lot of health questions, um, all the written exams you take, I think it was five written exams, and then you do your practical exams. And so I went to the upstate and studied with another certified feline master groomer for five days all day, grooming cats until I got it perfect. And it was so scary. <laughs> I mean, it was intense. Oh my gosh. I can't imagine, first of all, grooming in general, there's so much to learn. And then adding the wild side of cats to that process to me is yes. just, it takes a very special person. Yeah. I love cats. Like I love a challenge and okay. cats are always a challenge. Yes, always. Exactly. exactly. No every day has got to be different. Mean, every day is different. Every cat's different. Every cat might, the same cat might be different the next time I'm, I see him. I agree. I completely agree. Yeah. Cats are their own person, their own beings mm -hmm. for sure. And they make it known. Yes. Well, I need to take a break, but when we come back, okay. I want to talk about more details of what you do on a daily basis when you put your hands on these cats that could be a surprise, okay. could be matted, could be perfectly healthy, could be dirty like your Sphinx cats, which I saw you, she had, like you said, this is not, this is not her markings. It's this not, is it's dirt. not pigment, it's dirt, yes. <laughs> saw one of your videos and I said, well, I would have thought that was pigment. So I have so many questions for you. Do. Yeah, I, I, I bet. Uh, and I'm so glad that you're sharing all your information on social media. But let me take a break. Don't go anywhere. We're going to hear from our sponsors and we'll be right back with Charleston's Cat Groomer. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Covered in Pet Hair. I'm your host, Isabel Alvarez Rada, and I'm here with the Charleston Cat Groomer, Whitney Bullock, who is all over social media educating pet parents, cat parents in particular, about all the things that their cats need that they might not be getting. So Whitney, I heard you say Matt Chat, 
for one of your little videos you did. And I want to play a game with you that I've called Matt Chat. Are you ready to play? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm stealing the term you coined, I think. Love and it. I, I want you to do this quickly because it has to be a okay. quick fire challenge because I have a lot of questions. Okay. All right. Got it. Okay. All right. Here we go. How often do short haired cats need baths? Every eight weeks. Holy moly, that's more than I get my hair done. Okay, how <laughs> how often do long-haired cats need haircuts? Uh, never, if they're groomed regularly. Oh. Why do cats need their ears cleaned? Because they're dirty. <laughs> Does it just like living life just makes them dirty? It's just waxy, just waxy, just like us. Some are okay. dirtier than others. Okay, cool. Yeah. Why do cats get wax buildup around their nails? Some don't, some do. It's just another like thing. Just like some humans get uh, fingernails break or I don't know. It's just like a thing that happens. Um, I probably see it about 25% of the time. Ooh, another percentage over there. That's perfect. Yes. How come cats have dirty butts even though they groom themselves? Some can't reach back there and some don't want to reach back there. Once something gets dirty, I don't know about you, but I wouldn't want to clean it up. No, I agree. I agree. Like I'm totally with the cats on this one. Cats are smart. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like I'm good. Like I, if I, if I don't look, it doesn't exist. No, I don't need good. to do it. Clean my we, butt, human. Yeah, because we always imagine these cats with their legs straight up in the air, like licking themselves down yonder. But like, I can understand if it's all yeah. like, matted and like full of litter oh, yeah. and like that's yeah. not what they signed up for and once they get older it's hard for them to get back there at all understood what skin care specifically does the average cat need um not really any skin care grooming is all about keeping the skin clean so you kind of want to think about when you're grooming you're not really cleaning the fur you're cleaning the skin most cats are very greasy creatures mm -hmm. Okay, and even more so, I think a sphinx cat, right? Yeah, sphinx cats, red cats have a lot of oils in their skin. Um, a lot of gray cats do, I've noticed. Ooh, interesting. That's interesting. How often do cats need nail trims, even if they're using a scratching surface regularly? So every cat is different. A good place to start is every four weeks. So if you trim your cat's nails often, the quick will actually recede. And the more often you trim, the shorter the nails will get. Ooh, very, very interesting. All right, what is chin acne on cats? Just the acne like we get. It's a hormonal thing, and sometimes changing bowls helps. Sometimes it doesn't. There's actually an 83 comment argument about that on one of my Instagram posts. Oh my Not with goodness! Me. I didn't argue. <laughs> ah, she she gets in in social media fights all the time, guys. I'm just kidding. She has to defend what she does every day because these know it alls tell her stop torturing cats is basically what happens. I know yeah, you'll I'm notice. Wrong. So you'll notice. I never said that the bowl would fix it because it doesn't always. I didn't say that in the video. Right, but I'm sure like a dirty bowl or one that's like old or the wrong material oh, yeah. is not going to help. No, it's definitely a great place to start, but it's always it's not always a quick fix. Right. How many different types of cuts are there? I know that there was the the lion cut and then there's the fluffy cut. It well, how many the are cut, there yeah. in uh, the plush cut? Okay. How many are so there in total? With, yeah. So with cats, there's not a whole range like with dogs, like all these dogs have the breed specific cuts. Right. So there's lion cut, plush cut. Uh, we kind of have specified some cuts, made up our own cuts. So we do the Maine Coon, which is like a half inch belly, a sanitary cut and a long on top. And then the Persian conversion, which is a half inch belly, sanitary cut, paw pad trim, and all Persians get a face trim as well. Oh my goodness, I love that. Okay, last one. How quickly do cats start to mat between trims? Uh, it depends. So a trim, which would be like a haircut, if they are lion cut, then usually three to six months it's going to take for them to grow back. Uh, depends on whether or not the person is bathing them in between. Again, keeping that skin clean is key. So I would say don't go longer than two to three months if you got a lion cut to start bathing. Keep that skin clean as the hair comes in. Very, very good. Okay, so I know that you use a like a like a solid bar soap type shampoo. Tubs bar. Chubbs yep. bars. I have a question for you. Have you ever tried Chubbs bars on your own hair? 
Um, no, I have not, <laughs> but I have used another tool in my shop on my son's hair. Oh, yeah? Yes. The clippers, so during, the amazing clippers that you have? During COVID, he got a plush cut on his head. And it looked, I, it looked so bad like he wanted to kill me he was so embarrassed it I mean it, he looked like a baby chick <laughs> oh my and did you use your super fabulous clipper like shears I guess yeah it's I mean I was like this is this can't go wrong like it looks great on cats it does not work on human <laughs> <laughs> so maybe that's why you're not using the shampoo bar on your own hair like maybe yeah I kind of stopped with the <laughs> using of the cat products on the humans. I love it. Well, you recommend that cat owners start taking their cats to the groomers. There is controversy about yes. whether cats can do this themselves, whether it's good to have them groomed. And the good thing about your social media is that I, I find it really educational, but not just you like preaching, you actually show us the you know show me the money right like you show us what it is that you do and you have shaved cats where their what was re what remained the fur that remained looked like carpeting it looked like rug material because and yes. there was no way to comb through it there was no way yes that pelt was just completely yep. like indestructible so what would you tell a cat person who says i'm not taking my cat to the groomers Oh, so, I mean, if matting starts and a pelt starts to happen, it basically just encases the cat and it's so painful. It weighs a ton. Uh, keeping their skin clean is the way to prevent it. And I have actually seen a cat that was so pelted, the mats adhered to her skin and had to be surgically removed by a veterinarian. Because actually this guy thought that she would just lick it off and his own vet recommended that he put catnip on her fur to make her lick it more. Yes. I, I can't even believe it. Okay. So this yeah. is the way that I see it. And I, I don't know if this makes sense to anybody, but remember the movie Castaway? Yes. Okay. So that's what we would all look like if we didn't groom regularly. Right. Right. Exactly. Yes. So even though I'm more of a less is more type of person when it comes to like things, I do feel like regular mm -hmm. grooming is not just for humans. It's for every species because exactly. yes, you can go without grooming. We can, you and I could, right. but then we'd end up yeah. looking like castaway, right? Yes. And cats like to be clean. Yes. I mean, they love it. They love what, to be what species doesn't, you know, like nobody wants to smell no. gross, but I do have a question no. for you. So I just took my dog Kira to the groomer last week mm -hmm. or earlier this week. And she came home straight to the yard and like rubbed around and like rolled around and like made herself dirty. Right. Do cats <laughs> do that? Do cats do stuff like that? N not that I've heard. So most cats, people tell me they go home and they prance around. They're super cuddly, super snuggly proud like they love it it's like they know they're gorgeous they're like little supermodels right cats are I mean come on cats feel themselves cats really love themselves I know I, lo I, I love a cat because I do feel like they're like the more confident of the two breeds right like yeah of the two oh, species yeah. I guess Definitely. I should say yes yeah. okay so your recommendation is always to find someone like you that is a certified master a uh, groomer, how does one find one? Like, is there a database we should be looking yeah. on? Yeah. So you can go on the National Cat Groomers Institute site. There's a map feature at the bottom. And if you can't find a certified feline master groomer, there may be somebody that's in training or somebody that's hiding at your veterinarian's office. You know, people may be working up to getting certified. That's perfectly fine. I groomed before I was certified. I was still really good at it. That's just a way to perfect your art. Um, and, you know, it's not going to matter to your cat if they're certified or not. Of course, a certified person is going to do a better job. But if your cat is matted and there's somebody that can shave them off, yeah, it might not look perfect, but it's going to help the animal in the long term. And that's the most important thing. Absolutely. For sure. I, I mean, make sure they are reputable. Make sure that they are yes. safe, that they have reviews, yeah. ideally that they're established. But yeah, I mean, don't limit it to just that certification because I'm sure that that's something that's not super common. I, I didn't have the time to look in El Paso if we have 
a certified master feline. Uh, Pretty group. rare. But yeah, it, it must be. I think there's about okay. 300 of us. Oh, wow. In the whole country? In the world, I think. I think. That was like, I, that's the last time I heard. Yes. Bravo. Look at you. Congratulations. Uh, there might that's be more amazing. now. So. That's amazing. Hopefully. And hopefully there will be more because as people start demanding the services more, then yes. there will be more people entering this industry. Um, I love that cats are getting the, lo the love that they deserve. Cats have always been like yes. a second class citizen in the pet world. Yep. They're always behind on everything. Exactly. So now we have you and people like you to make that change. But before we wrap up, this is my third game. I call it okay. haters gonna hate. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm gonna give you one minute on my handy dandy clock and you're gonna tell me okay. all the rebuttals you have for your haters about how you torture cats. Are you ready to play? Oh gosh, okay, this one's <laughs> gonna be weird. <laughs> okay, you can yeah, tell them well. whatever you want. Just respond to your haters. Okay. All right, I'm one, ready. two, three, go! I'm just gonna run through like my top comments I can think of. Uh, soft paws are cruel. No, they're not. They were invented by a veterinarian. They're, they don't hurt. They can still retract their claws. Uh, cats are na cats have lanolin in their skin and you can't walk off. No, that's sheep. Uh, cats have a protective film that you can't wash off. No, they don't. That's just oil. Uh, let me think what else. You can't shave a cat because their hair will grow back completely different and it will ruin their coat. No, that's wrong. You can shave a cat. Uh, you can't shave a cat because they won't be able to cool or heat themselves. That's wrong. It's fur. It doesn't really do much. It doesn't definitely doesn't cool them down in Charleston heat. Anybody that's ever worn a fur coat in the heat can tell you it doesn't cool you off. <laughs> uh, what else? The, you have 10 seconds left. Clean. They'll lick their own butt clean. No, I live that every day. And if I can smell your cat coming to the door, they're not licking their own butt clean. Oh, that was perfect. I love it so much. Uh, yeah, we got to stop with the hating on social media, especially for people who are making a huge uh, difference in the lives of animals. Let's let's support them, not hate on them. Yes. All right. Well, tell us how can, how can my audience learn more about you and all you offer if they're in Charleston or if they want to follow you on social media? Yeah, so they can visit my website. There's a lot of information on there. There's pictures. They can book online there. They can call us. Uh, on our business line, follow my Instagram. I've got tons of tips and tricks. They can follow me on TikTok. And those are the places that you can find out about me. We do have a little YouTube. We don't have a lot of time to do stuff on there, but you know, sometimes we'll slap something up if we have time. That is awesome. I do spend some time on your YouTube for fun. And uh, I obviously spend time on your Instagram all the time. Uh, and one of the things I learned about you on Instagram is that those adorable little earrings you're wearing right now, yes. you sell those. So tell us about them. I do. Who makes them? Well, so we, so I ordered them um, from a supplier that just like, we ordered some cat beds and some other things from a supplier. And they were like, do you want to try these? And I was like, oh, I guess. Yeah. And they're by far our biggest seller. Everybody loves them. And they're so, they're just fun and cute. They're little cats. Like they've got little cat ears on them and they're just adorable, right? I mean, how cute is this? I love them. I ordered a pink pair. I did not receive it in time. So I'm wearing my desert landscape earrings that my friend Monica sent me. But as soon as I get them, I'm going to rock them uh, for one of my I future episodes. I can't wait to see it. I know. I'm yeah. so excited. I've never been into the pet specific like paraphernalia, but like I'm getting more comfortable as I get older, I become more of a crazy pet person. And I'm like, Oh, I'm totally going to yes. wear like cat earrings. And you also have a hat. Uh, that Which is one are you uh, wanting? Uh, the pussy shaver. Is that right? <laughs> <laughs> the pussy shaver. I don't, I don't even know where it's at. It's in here somewhere. Hold on. <laughs> I don't think I have it handy. Yeah. I have part Maine Coon though. I have that oh, one here. I, love that. I wasn't sure. I wasn't sure if pussy shaver would be allowed. Uh, this is a popular <laughs> one, the feral one. I love the feral one. I actually forgot to look at that when I was ordering. So I'm gonna I'm gonna yeah. order a different I'm gonna make another order. I have allergic to cat. <laughs> 
And I have no idea where Pussy Shaver is. My husband and my son were in here, so they may have taken it away. But I wear it all the time on Instagram. So that's hilarious. I think that's such a yes. funny gag gift, too. Um, mm-hmm. I know a few people who would get a kick out of receiving a hat like that. So I just want to thank yes. you. Here, here's to thank you for you. posting a toast to you Cheers. and your team yes. and all the cats. Thank you so much. Oh, it's my pleasure to have you on the show and it's my pleasure to be in touch. And uh, maybe I can have you back to do a special on Sphinx Cats. Do you think you'd be open to that? Absolutely. Oh, okay, yeah. cool, cool, cool. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hold you to that. I also want to propose a toast okay. to our ex- executive producer, Mark Winter. Thank you, Mark, for making this show possible. And to our audience on YouTube and on Pet Life, on Pet Life Radio, thank you for being our, our, our audience. Thank you for spending your time with us. Here's to a life covered in pet hair because there's no better way to live. Cheers. Yes. To learn more about Covered in Pet Hair, please visit CoveredInPetHair.com or PetLifeRadio.com. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.